Hi everyone, I'm Nisha and I hope you're doing great. So in today's video, I wanted to share a poetry with you which is the poem of the day in the dark poetry calendar. So for those of you who don't know, this is the dark poetry calendar. It's an undated calendar that contains poems on every day, on, on every page, every day of the year. There is There are tons of poems. And the great thing about this uh, poetry calendar is that all of the poems are by Indian writers. That is people in the subcontinent of India, uh, whoever has written poetry many of these uh, poets are featured in the dark calendar and so in today's poem uh, it was really interesting and, and I was just really uh, struck by how it resonates with me and how it resonates with I'm sure thousands of women and uh, female identifying people from around the world and so I decided to just uh, create this short video so I can read it out for you. So the uh, artist or the poet that I want to talk about right today is Eunice de Zorza, and the poetry is Advice to Women. So Eunice de Zorza just uh, for some you know, background, I've opened up a website tab over here. So I'm just going to read out some information about Eunice de Zorza so that you can get some idea about the kind of background that she comes from. So Eunice de Zorza is an Indian poetess. She was born in Pune in 1940. So this was prior to the independence of India. Uh, she was born to a Goan Catholic family. And... Uh, her early education took place in Pune. So Pune is in the state of Maharashtra, which is near the coast, coastal region of India. So she went on to study English literature with a master's from Marquette University in Wisconsin, the United States. And then she came back to India for her PhD and she completed her PhD from the University of Mumbai. Then, once she completed her PhD, she took up a teaching position at St. Xavier's College, that is one of the most reputed colleges in India, in the state of Mum or in the state of Maharashtra, and in the city of Mumbai even today. So that's like one of the prestigious colleges that everyone wants to get into, and it's got a, a good pedigree of other literati who come out from there as well. And she was also the head of the English department where she worked for 30 long years until her retirement from the college. So Eunice de Souza, as you can see, she's had such a long heritage and such a rich heritage within the literature community, literature um, background. And uh, some of her you know, works included you know, novels, novellas, poetry, essays, and so on. And um, so she's worked for both, she's written for both adults and for children. Um, it doesn't mention whether it's specifically YA, but it just states children's literature. So a large part of Eunice de Zorza's um, works, whether it's poetry or prose, focuses on the life experiences of women who are navigating the modern Indian landscape. And when I say modern, I mean contemporary to the time when Eunice had written these works. So some of them talk of women in relationships, while others, like for example, um, Danger Lok follows a middle-aged Indian woman who navigates uh, and negotiates the city of Mumbai as a single woman. So both you know, all women in different uh, relationship statuses, different life experiences, different life stages are all a champion in Eunice de Souza's works. And she is a feminist uh, icon in the Indian literati circles. And uh, yeah, she writes, uh, she writes for the Mumbai Mirror, which is one of the leading uh, newspapers in Mumbai. Uh, and her columns talk of literature, history, politics, and personal experiences. And so she's got a bunch of uh, poetry collections, some of which are fix, uh, women in Dutch painting, ways of belonging, a necklace of skulls, and learn from the almond leaf. And um, oh yeah, this is a, such an interesting fact that I just found out here. Eunice de Zorza was the only Indian woman to be included in the Oxford India Anthology of 12 Modern Indian Poets which is something really fascinating because 
if you look online the coverage that um, female writers or, and female poets get globally is significantly lesser compared to their male counterparts and uh, if you look at women of color who are writers and poets that number even drops down even more significantly and uh, India as a country, although it's got a rich heritage of uh, literature and the arts and singing and dancing and music, we don't really have a, um, a record of, you know, people who are important members of our literati community, of our art community, of our music and our um, performative uh, communities and so on so and especially women artists women poets in India are not really the focus or focal point of research unfortunately of course things are changing we are having people who are um, digging deep into understanding these women artists uh, in today's time today's students of cultural studies and literature are actually doing this for us and um, definitely things do look promising but if you if you go on wikipedia it's very unlikely that you'll find a fleshed out write-up of indian women poets and indian women artists so um eunice deserza being the only indian woman to be included in the oxford india anthology of 12 modern indian poets is a significantly uh is a significant achievement and a wonderful thing for india and for and for india's women alike and um, Oxford University Press included her in the anthology of nine India women poets. Um, and that's a book that I have my eye on right now. And I'm going to definitely get that uh, because especially my sister loves poetry. So uh, definitely I think she's going to enjoy that as well. And uh, yeah, her life has been just absolutely amazing. And, and I'm just reading through here. Mm, let me just see if there's something else that I can talk to you about about her. Uh, so so most of her writings according to this this post that i'm reading um so this is the feminism in india website that i'm looking at so feminism in india covers a lot of indian women uh, and their contribution to the indian society and so uh sahitya academy award winning author jerry pinto uh, you know uh, said that she was an eminent figure who dominated the poetry skyline so she's one of the most famous po poets female poets in india and her writings show concern for the plight of numerous Indian women across different social contexts. So they've given an example of how uh, Yunus Dezorza's works cover everyone from uh, people who are working in housekeeping jobs such as maid servants to, uh, you know, women who are leading businesses and who are politicians and so on, or, you know, homemakers. So. Uh, not only do they, does Eunice Dezorza ex explore different uh, facets of womanhood and different expressions of womanhood, but they also, ex but she also explores the concepts of loss, alienation, and isolation as when you are a woman in in the Indian context. So, this is a uh, pretty much uh, you know an exp a summary of what Eunice Dezorza's um, works look like. And uh, a lot because she is a gone uh, Catholic uh, by birth, a lot of her writings do d derive from her cultural and traditional upbringing as well. And um, yeah, her approach has been very liberating, and her poetic style is considered to be distinctive, wry, and sardonic. There was a cruel wisdom to her poetry. So this is something that a lot of other people have spoken about Eunice Dezorza. And um, as time went on, her descriptive poems became more minimalistic and uh, each of her poems have a crystalline clarity in terms of the focus that they are trying to, you know, the, what the theme that they're trying to focus on. And her work has been impactful, not just in the world of literature, but generally in understanding uh, what women what it feels like to be women in contemporary india so now that i've given you a background on yunus de Zorza, let's just go through this uh, advice to women by yunus de Zorza. keep cats if you want to learn to cope with the otherness of lovers otherness is not always neglect cats return to their litter trees when they need to don't cuss out of the window at their enemies. That stare of perpetual surprise in those great green eyes will teach you 
to die alone. So you can just read that over here. Now the way I understand Eunice de uh, poem of Advice to Women is um, that it focuses on uh, you know the different expressions within our relationships. Now, the the poem equates uh, men because, and I'm talking, I'm specifically talking about men because uh, you know when at the time when Eunice wrote this poem, and even uh, to a large extent today, a majority of the relationships in India are still cishet purely because uh, queer relationships have not, um, you know, have not received social sanction, and uh, it's still considered taboo. So. We are going to be discussing this from a set relationship, although the same ideas, ideas and ideals within this poem can actually be applied across relationships irrespective of gender and sexual orientation. Now, uh, Eunice equates men uh, with cats. Cats are considered to be aloof, detached, independent. And in India especially, there is this sense of, um, or this focus of, uh, more than focus, I think there is this pressure for men to be emotionally unavailable, to be detached, to be cold, because that's considered masculine, that's considered brave, and that's considered not being a woman. So, you know, not being the sissy, feminine kind of a man. So, um, a lot of men tend to not give in to their emotions. They don't emotionally connect with their partners, and so. There, women start to feel the sense of alienation and isolation within their relationships and that creates these fractures you know which then widen into deep chasms that cannot be bridged over time and a lot of what happens is especially in the Indian setting and this is again this is my understanding of the poem it could and your understanding of the poem could be something different but my understanding of the poem is that you know, especially in the Indian setting, given that a large number of uh, weddings happen, marriages happen through an arranged marriage, wherein a lot of times the both the partners, the bride and the groom, seldom have an opportunity to um, interact with each other, at least not a lot, uh, prior to the wedding. And therefore, there is not a strong emotional foundation or physical foundation built at the start of the marriage uh, both the partners are not really aware of each other's love language and their cues and therefore it's all a sense of discovery now when you add to this the social pressure of acting like a man and 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 that separation between what men and women must behave like there is this uh, this sort of uh, you know it be forging the deep emotional bonds becomes extremely hard now again, of course, modern relationships are turning out to be different because contemporary, as in in 2022, marriages uh, are definitely between people who do get the opportunity to interact with each other uh, for a long time before they're getting uh, engaged. And uh, those ideals of what masculine and feminine mean are not so strongly um, held right now but if you consider to a large extent you know in traditional societies there is still this present and so uh Eunice de Souza's poem talks of how um you know women who experience the sense of otherness from their partners from their spouses you know don't consider this to be something that indicative of um, catastrophe for your relationship don't consider this to be something you know where they might not return to you or they might not seek solace from you or they might not consider you their emotional harbor and she equates men to cats and she says otherness is not always neglect cats return to their related race when they need to and uh, so just like that you know give your relationship some time because it might actually help and uh, yeah and or things might actually change so if, I, I believe that this was some this is something written for specifically uh, relationships where either the marriage or the relationship has just started or the initial few years where it's really important to build that sort of intimacy and connectedness and when it doesn't happen that sense of otherness isolation that chasm starts to deepen so now another way to analyze the poem and to look at the second half of the poem is um, to flip the narrative and to talk of how Eunice Zerza uses this metaphor of men as cats or uh, as a way to encourage women to let go of the ideal of you know finding that perfect partner to fall in love with, to build a family with, to have a uh, to have that happily ever after with. 
um, definitely this is not something that struck me immediately but then when I analyzed this poem uh, you know by reading the other interpretations by so many other people uh, this definitely does make sense to me so I'm just going to share a bit about that as well so Eunice also encourages women to let go of the idea of having that happily ever after because she talks of how in the um, in the sentence you know don't cuss out the window at their enemies uh, which is basically in reference to if you are in a human relationship and there is the sense of othering and you try to um, talk to your partner about it or maybe you confront them about it or you ask them to stop pushing you away emotionally or physically and try to bond with you there is this a possibility of your partner lashing out at you in anger and aggression um, you know possibly the guilt could make them even you know get even angrier or express hate or they may just generally not be interested because like i said this dichotomy between what men and women must behave like especially in an indian con con conventionally indian cultural setting uh, you know can can make these demands of wanting to be emotionally available and closer physically and emotionally to your partner something unpalatable to certain individuals of a certain temperament so uh, if we flip the narrative and we say that you know Eunice deserves is asking women to instead choose cats as their lifelong partners and to forego human or rather not exactly forego but then consider that you know instead of finding that man who's going to be your knight in shining armor and your happily ever after consider what it would be like to live with cats you know cats are exactly like you know human males in the sense that there there is the sense of othering because cats are independent and not like dogs who are really needy for attention and uh, Despite all of this, you know, even though they push you away sometimes and they're really independent, they don't need you all the time, they come back to the litter boxes when they when they need food, when they need to pee and poop, when they need water, and sometimes they just come and, uh, you know, snuggle next to you when they need companionship. And even if you feel like there is this sense of, you know, even when you feel like confronting your cat about the sense of otherness, this isolation, this 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 you know distance between the two of you your cat is not very likely to lash out at you it's not likely to cuss at you and what it would rather do is just be a cat to cat things so uh, in a way Eunice also talks of you know sort of learning to cope with the with the idea learning to acknowledge and cope and accept the idea that you know it's okay to be alone it's okay to not have that knight in shining armor who's going to be your happily ever after uh, because culturally around the world we are you know we are sort of uh, socially sort of cultivated to believe this idea of the one you know the one who's there for us and who's going to be there for us and who we need to spend our rest of our life with who, who we need to marry and have children with and so and you know they wouldn't let us uh, die alone and uh, yeah so Eunice deserves a sort of flips that narrative and says that you know what being with a cat will teach you to be independent or rather will at least help you understand and acknowledge the fact that it's okay to be alone it's okay the sense of otherness is not really truly isolating if you give in to it and you understand that that this distance doesn't mean that your cat hates you it's just a state of being and you know what living alone and dying alone aren't that scary because you'll have learned the skills to cope for yourself and you won't place all the you know eggs of your happiness um, or all of your hopes and dreams you won't pin it on a single individual who may not meet your expectations and who may not want to um, support these expectations or maybe unable to so that's what I understood from this and um, that's what my research has also supported and I think this is just an absolutely fantastic poem uh, advice to women by, women by Eunice de Souza. and I think this is one of those poems that is very relevant to today when more women are choosing to become self-partnered so yeah that's it okay I, I know this was just like a random video but uh, I really felt like talking to you and I really enjoyed talking about this poem and yeah this is this dark poetry calendar is something that i purchased a couple of months ago it is still available and because it's undated you know you can keep using it you can buy it even now although it's media and you can keep using it for years to come the number of indian poems on this is absolutely staggering and it's amazing so if you like poetry and you want to explore indian poets then definitely pick this up bye everyone